Hi everyone, welcome to the Sack Race Reacts. Today we are looking at the news. The Bristol Rovers have sacked Paul Tisdale. They're looking for their third manager of the season. We're going to take a look at all the names in the frame. But first to Tisdale, he lasted 19 games, less than three months in the frame. No, no wins in his last 10. He criticised his players quite publicly. There was no real confidence. The style wasn't too great. There's that 6-1 defeat to Accrington as well. I'm here with empty seats. Simon, what was your initial reaction to the news? Yeah, I think I was surprised a bit by the news. Just as you mentioned, it was such a short period of time for him to, to turn things around. They had those 10 defeats in a row. You mentioned some of the results, the 6-1 to Accrington Stanley. They've not been scoring many goals. He's not been happy with his strikers, which is a bit of a turnaround from when he first joined and the goals are flying in. So I think for Tisdale, it's just... I think they've hit the panic button slightly. I do. I do think that he would have he would have kept them up. But uh, yeah, I can understand why they've made the change. They're just hovering above the league one relegation zone at the moment. So it's a, it's a tricky job at Bristol City at the moment. I thought Tisdale was a good appointment when he joined. I think you did as well, Jack. So I'm not sure where they go from here. So they're looking for the third manager of the season. In as one of the early favourites is caretaker Tommy Widrington, who replaced Ben Garner for one game back in November. He's the director of football. He's had a hand in, he was their head of recruitment. So he's had a hand in uh, finding their players. He's done loads of research on them. No one knows the players in terms of their background better than he does. In terms of managerial experience, he's had stints in non-league at Salisbury, Hemel Hampstead and Eastborough, Eastbourne Borough, sorry. But not, nothing in, in the Football League with 20 games left. Is he the man to save him or do you see him just taking charge of this big game against Swindon and then looking to bring someone else in? Yeah, it's a tricky one with Widrington. The name rang a bell to me because he used to be Coventry's head of development. I mean, uh, head of recruitment, rather. He brought in a lot of players who were uh, rather hit and miss, to be honest, including Johnson Clark Harris. And then he basically took exactly the same players to Bristol Rovers, including Johnson Clark Harris, who was amazing for them. I think that kind of explains the lack of goals for Bristol Rovers this season, losing Johnson Clark Harris. And they haven't really recovered from losing such a top striker to Peterborough in the summer, to be honest. But for Widrington, with no managerial experience, yes, he might be able to get them G'd up for one or two games, especially this weekend's game against Swindon, as you mentioned. But for a long-term-ish appointment, you know, 20 games to go to keep them in League One, I think they might need someone with a little bit more experience. Could that man be Joey Barton? I've seen his name everywhere on Twitter. He leads our Twitter poll at the moment. The former Fleetwood boss, out of work, did a really good job there, led them into the playoffs, attractive football, left uh, at the start of the year. He's been linked with Sheffield Wednesday since is he the man to galvanize this fan base or do you think he doesn't want to risk it because it's going into a tricky situation fighting for survival and he might it might hinder his reputation yeah it's a tricky one they are fighting for survival this year but you've got to remember bristol rovers are a big club in that division a bigger club than fleetwood you've got to admit even though they don't have quite the same resources as fleetwood do but barton i think it would be a risk for him to take this job but he would be able to guide them away from the relegation zone, and then next season, perhaps he can build something. I think Barton, it's an important time of his career for me. I don't think he's going to get a championship job just yet, even though he did some good work with Fleetwood. So I think he would be looking in League One again. And Bristol Rovers are one of the bigger clubs in the division, so perhaps this would be a sensible move for him, even though right at the moment it looks like a bit of a risk. One name that is always, always, always linked with Bristol Rovers is legendary Ian Holloway former player and manager. It's staggeringly been 20 years since he managed Bristol Rovers. Um, he writes a column for the local paper, of course. Um, we did a video with him about a year ago where he talked about his time as player and manager. I'll put a link in the description below. But he's out of work. He left Grimsby at the end of last year. Simon, short-term deal to, until the end of the season. Ian Holloway, Bristol Rovers. I'd love it. I would absolutely love it. It just seems like a really good fit. His circumstances at Grimsby, I don't think he left in the best uh, manner, to be honest. So I think he got a few negative reviews there. It was a bit of a surprise to take it, uh, for him to take that job. But a homecoming for Ian Holloway has got a really nice ring to it. I'm not sure how the Bristol Rovers fans would feel about that one. Um, but yeah, I think that would be brilliant. And we always like seeing Ian Holloway in the dugout. So I think he could be the man to guide them away from danger as well. That's got to be the aim for them this season. He's got a whole load of experience. So yeah, Ian Holloway, I, I like that one. Fingers crossed on that one then. Um, maybe a former player, Brian Anthony's been linked. Uh, Lee Mansell as well, of course, scored that spot kick to propel them back into the Football League. I think he's working as their development squad manager right now. 
they've both been linked, as is Tony Pulis, who uh, played for the club, of course, but went on to manage Bristol City, did do too well there. He's been hotly linked with Bournemouth recently. He's been out of work for about six weeks. He left uh, Sheffield Wednesday after 10 games at the end of uh, last year. Tony Pulis at Bristol Rovers, a return as manager? Uh, I don't think so, no. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's, he's too high profile a name. I mean, we've seen the likes of Paul Cook in the running as well. I think those two sort of managers are certainly going to get a job in the championship again. So for me, Pulis is probably not going to happen for Bristol Rovers. I think they might be a little bit happy to see this one not go ahead. Yeah, Paul Cook and Danny Cowley, of course, in every market. But history tells us they do not want a League One job again, I don't think. I think they want to come straight back into the championship. So it probably rules both of them out. Graham Cochran, former manager, did so well with them, but they left in quite controversial fashion, of course. He went down a division to Mansfield, wanted to be closer to his family. Don't see that one happening either. Nigel Atkins has all, also been linked. He's been linked with loads of jobs. But for some reason, he, he's not coming back to management yet. But maybe we have to keep an eye on that one. He's got the experience and he's missed the positive, of course. Simon Keith Curl, who left at the same time as Paul Tisdale on Wednesday, left North Ham his post at Northampton. They're in an identical situation to Bristol Rovers. Could he, could he just come straight back into the League One dugout? Yeah, listen, I really like Keith Curl and, and what he's done at uh, Northampton. He got, got them promoted, obviously, against the odds in, in League Two up to League One. I think they were expected to be in a relegation battle this season, so no real surprises there. But no, I don't think, given what he's done this season, they've not really climbed out of the relegation zone. They're struggling. They're in a relegation battle. I can't see Bristol Rovers swapping one manager who can't get them away from the bottom four for another one. Just looking at some outsiders, so we've got John Terry at 20-1. to 1. He's been linked with Bournemouth, but I don't think he's going to leave Aston Villa just yet. We've got uh, Phil Parkinson at 20 to 1 as well. Roberto Di Matteo at 22 to 1. Alan Pardew at 22 to 1. Simon, is there anyone else you're going to throw into the mix? Or do you see this being either an internal appointment until the end of the season or a very short term contract for an incoming manager? I actually don't mind the shout of um, Phil Parkinson. That's the one I was going to bring up to you as well, Jack. I mean, the work he did at Sunderland wasn't great. He's a manager with a whole load of experience. I think, again, his next job will probably be in League One and he's out of work at the minute. So Phil Parkinson, for me, should be a little higher up in the running. I'm not sure Bristol Rovers will go for him, but I like that as a shout. Um, I think Ian Holloway on a short-term contract would be a good move. I think Tommy Widrington would be a big risk, to be honest, but managers have got to start somewhere. So for me, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of names in the running here. I think that Ian Holloway is a decent shout. It's worth noting as well, one bookmaker, Bet Victor, did uh, suspend betting on Tommy Widrington getting the job, but he's still odds on elsewhere. So we have to see how this one plays out over the next few days. Check out all the news and odds on the sackrace.com. <laughs> 